Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for November 29th, 2022. Today I'm going to begin the report on the how the West, in keeping with their wishful fantasy that Ukraine is winning the war, is continuing to pump more weapons into the self-destructive war that's ongoing in Ukraine. Especially the British and the U.S. are committing themselves to increasing the weapons flow. Now, this is occurring as Ukraine is depleting its Western supply of weapons, which has been quite substantial. And its NATO suppliers are running out of replacements. And also the ability to restock them has been severely diminished by deindustrialization, uh, shortages of goods, and shortages of labor. Uh, Reuters had a report that one-third of the 350 howitzers, for example, are out of service at any time. As the barrels are wearing out, they're being worn out faster than they can be repaired or replaced. The New York Times reported that Ukraine is firing six to 7,000 artillery rounds per day, and supplies are running low. Uh, six to 7,000 a day. The U.S. can only produce 15,000 rounds per month. Now, it's also reported that from NATO officials, 20 of the 30 NATO members are, quote, tapped out of weapons to send, and some of the other 10, including Germany, France, and the Netherlands, are holding back on supplying weapons they have available. Now, in, in spite of the costs of war, and the difficulties with the British economy, largely as a result of the policies of the government there, which of course they blame on Putin. But I don't think Putin had anything to do with the mini budget of Liz Truss or the Tory austerity policies and deindustrialization policies of the last decade. But Sunak yesterday, the prime minister, insisted in an address that he would, quote, stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes, unquote, joining such war hawks as Germany's foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, who famously said that Germany will continue to provide weapons to Ukraine till the end. And she added, quote, we will do so no matter what my German voters think, unquote. Democracy, anyone? Now, the ignoring of the suffering of the population is only a part of it. What Sunak called for is an escalation of military capabilities. He called for new support for air defense for Ukraine. One wonders, is he planning to provide air defense for Poland from Ukrainian missiles? He also called for shipments of advanced laser-guided missiles called the Brimstone II, uh, which can target Russian ships in the Black Sea or military targets in Crimea. Uh, this is a significant issue because the uh, military defense think tank in Britain, RUSI, the Royal United Services Institute, has called for a Crimean missile crisis. And there's much talk about how, as part of the lauded offensive of the Ukrainian forces, the next phase will be the retaking of Crimea. For its own part, the U.S. is considering sending new ground-launched small-diameter bombs with a range of up to 150 kilometers, which means they could reach Russian territory. And Biden, as we've reported, has a new package prepared to go through the lame duck session of nearly $40 billion of aid, some humanitarian, mostly military, and so far, it appears as though there's no significant blowback from either so-called left pro-peace Democrats or America First Republicans. Uh, and on this question of Republican opposition to the war, you have Rep Representative Michael McCall, who's slated to become the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He said, since Crimea is not considered a part of Russia by international law, then if they, meaning Ukraine, can hit into Crimea, I think that's fair game. That's what McCall said. 
Once again, this shows that the U.S. is lining up behind British talking points, as I mentioned, the Rusi report. Now, you have to look at this question, what is the purpose of this war? And you have to think much more broadly when you talk about the military-industrial complex. On the one hand, yes, arms production is a part of it, and this does fill the coffers of the defense industries and, and related kinds of technical services and so on. Also, it gives them an excuse to impose war stump, wartime austerity on the rest of the government spending to have funds available for this vast expansion of the military. And to some extent, that spills over into the economy and they can say, see, we have a booming economy. But you have to go deeper. The whole point of this war operation is to defend the idea of a unipolar world in which the Western financial powers, primarily Wall Street and the city of London with Brussels thrown in, can dictate terms to all the world's economies. And that includes an end to sovereign decisions by nation states, the, the end of the uh, commitment to taking care of the population by various governments, and instead a commitment to the speculative system, which is collapsing in front of us. That's the whole point of the war against Russia and the threatened war against China, to knock out those countries which would challenge this unipolar order, which is moving toward a so-called Great Reset. Now, let me conclude with a report from Helga Zeppler-Rusch yesterday, uh, which answers the question, how do they think they can get away with this? It, it's so blatantly obvious that they're continuing a war that benefits no one but the billionaire class, that's destroying the, the nation of Ukraine and the population of Ukraine, and at the same time, allowing them to impose austerity on their own citizens. How do they think they can get away with this? Well, Mrs. LaRouche reported there's a new initiative coming from the European Union Commission, which is now going into the schools in Europe to make the coming generation resistant against so-called lies. They're preparing what they call a psychological vaccination, which is supposed to make brains more resilient to reject the, uh, reject the truth that, that we're reporting among others. And they're giving, they've, they've created these European Union guidelines for teachers to implement this psychological vaccination. They're using a so-called scientific survey, which found that around the Ukraine conflict, there are 5,755 deliberate disinformations and many thousands more on subjects like COVID, climate change, and similar things. So here are things that the European Union is telling teachers they cannot say. NATO expansion is a serious threat to Russia, not allowed. The West is provoking Russia, not allowed. NATO is aggressive, forbidden. Now keep in mind, they're not even saying these can be debated. They're saying they must not be asserted, that they're false and must be driven out of the public debate. Uh, the West has a deep interest to contain Russia, forbidden. NATO is using Ukraine to fight against Russia. You can't say that. Western sanctions are leading to food crisis and inflation. Verboten, can't say that. Western sanctions are the cause for inflation. You cannot say that. Uh, European Union sanctions are damaging Europe more than Russia. Nope, can't say that. The U.S. is profiting from Nord Stream sabotage can't say that. And of course, you can't even speculate that the U.S. and the British probably did the sabotage. Uh, that Azov nationalists are Nazis. Can't say it. The U.S. and Europe are supporting Islamists in Syria. Cannot say that either. Uh, the method of the European Union for fighting the COVID pandemic is a fiasco. Can't say that. Corona vaccinations are experimental. Nope, can't say that. These vaccines are not efficient against new strains. That's disallowed also. So basically, they're giving guidelines to teachers that they have to instruct pupils that you may not repeat such statements because they are, quote, lies. This is called pre-bunking. 
You know, this is a, a notion now called inoculation research that has come up with this. And they're saying that, well, debunking is when you unmask something that's wrong. But pre-bunking is when you change the psychological attitude of the recipient in such a way that he or she is considering the statement already wrong before they come into contact with the statement. And with pre-bunking, they believe they can completely inoculate pupils. So what can you do to fight this? Because this is pervasive. It's not just the European Union. This is the politically correct culture, the cancel culture, and so on, which has taken over the Western world. Well, the first thing you can do is sign up for our website, because we're fighting this every single day at the LaRouche Organization. And I'll have the links to sign up for it at the bottom of the description page. Secondly, sign up for my page at the LaRouche Organization, so you'll be notified about my daily update as well as any articles that I post. And third, and this is an important one, sign up for the Executive Intelligence Review Daily Alert, which provides much of the intelligence that I use to prepare my daily video update. With those three steps, you can inoculate yourself from this inoculation or pre-bunking, which is underway by the would-be oligarchs of the Western world. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow and take my advice on this. The most important thing for your mental health is to fight for the truth and be able to distinguish between the lies they feed you and what is actually the, the dynamic processes which underlie events in the world. See you tomorrow.